over the past few years, I've gotten great deals on cars. I've helped customers and friends get great deals through a five-step process that I'm outlining in this video. Now make sure to watch through to the very end because I'm including bonus tips, which you can then take to save thousands of dollars and the headache at the dealership. Keep in mind that patience and preparation are the most important factors of this entire process. Patience will allow you to get the best deal and preparation will allow you to know what the best deal is before you even set foot in the dealership. Let's cover the best time to purchase a car. At the end of every month, dealerships will typically need to meet their quotas. And furthermore, at the end of the quarter will be the most important times for them to meet their, their quotas. If in addition to that, there's a lot of holidays out there, such as President's Day, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Black Friday, and New Year's Eve. On that note, New Year's Eve is the absolute best time of year to purchase a car because that's when all of the year-end, quarterly end, and month-end promotions will be in effect and the time when they need to meet the most quotas. The best time to purchase a used car is between the months of October and December, and that's because everybody else is coming to trade in their older models for the brand new models. That allows you to get the car that you want with all its features at a reasonable price. On the flip side, the worst time to buy a car is the beginning of the month when they have less urgency to cut deals on Saturdays when they don't have a lot of time for everybody and they are just less likely to give you the attention of the deals. And then during the summer when the prices are usually highest. Now that we have a better understanding of when the best time to purchase a car is, let's go into step one, which is understanding your current financial situation and how this car will fit into that mix. I'd say it's usually best to follow the 24-10 rule, which basically says you have 20% down payment for the car spread over a four-year term, which does not exceed more than 10% of your monthly budget. Now that 10% of your monthly budget would also include things like car insurance, um, repairs, maintenance, etc. If you are exceeding 60 months term or five years for the loan, then you probably cannot afford this car if you need to do that to meet the monthly budget that, you're, that you set for yourself. If you also have a car to trade in, this is also a good time to start looking at how much that car is worth and to consider selling it on your own private party or to consider trading that into the dealer. Here's a bonus tip. Keep in mind that nowadays, all cash payments will not necessarily get you the best deal. And sometimes financing can even get you a better deal or help put you in a financial situation where you can build your credit and stretch the payments out over a longer period of time so you can use that money for something else. Keep your budget top of mind to the rest of these four steps because now that you know what your budget is, you can no longer be pressured into buying something different because you know what you can afford and you know what you're comfortable paying. Step two is reviewing financing options. Now the whole goal of this is to figure out where you're going to have the best rates and the best fees for the goal that you're trying to accomplish. Now newer cars will have a lower interest rate because there's more value in them and as they get older they depreciate and often they'll depreciate between 15 to 20% every single year. So if you're financing an older car, it's very likely that your interest rates will be significantly higher than the newer cars. Here's a pro tip. The credit unions that I've worked with in the past have always offered great rates in comparison to some banks and even the dealerships because dealerships will often wanna take a cut of the financing and they get a payout there in addition to you purchasing the car from them. Once you have your credit checked, it's important to make sure that you do all of your loan shopping very quickly afterwards because the people who manage your credit score will look at those multiple hits against your report and lump them together to put you in the category of the smart shoppers who are looking to get the best deal. Aside from that, if you wait after 14 days, it'll affect your credit more negatively than any other time. But I would limit checking your credit as much as you possibly can. This is not financial advice and it's not a rule. It's just something that I've read and researched and it seems to be true. The most important part when shopping for a loan is to understand the finance charges, the term of the loan, so how long it is, and the interest. These three things will allow you to ac accurately shop around and find the best deal. Now, I've also included a link down below, which allows you to determine how much interest you're gonna be paying the bank and how much you're actually paying to your car over the entire life of the loan. Step three is conducting research on all the different car options. So you'll wanna take a look at the features and benefits, the prices, and the locations that you can find these cars. And a great place to look is Edmunds.com, Kelly Blue Book, Nada Guides, and even YouTube will have a lot of great reviews. 
Pro tip, make sure you're looking at consumer reports and consumer reviews because the difference between one year can sometimes make a massive effect on the effectiveness of the car and how much you actually like it in the long run. Step four is choosing the car and prepping the insurance company for your purchase. So I'd say this is the time where you actually get to go and drive the cars in the lots. But before you go, make sure you have the understanding that today is not the day that you're purchasing the car. You are only taking information so that you can figure out which car you want. Once you drive the cars and you have a feel for the car, go home, make your pros and cons lists, figure out which features and benefits you really need, and then call the insurance company to figure out how much your monthly payments will be so that you have a better understanding of all the expenses as a whole before you go and make your purchase. Once you've identified the type of car that you want, all you need to do is go out and search for deals. Now, a lot of times, new cars will have all the inventories on the lot, and you just need to find a dealership that's reputable and even possibly find a salesperson that you can work with. Then make a spreadsheet with the dealer and the dealer salesperson so that you can go ahead and reach out to them at a later date. Now, if you have a situation where you're looking for a used car, inventory can be a little scarce and it's not really easy for you to just walk up to any dealership to get the specific car that you're looking for, which is why I use cargurus.com because it distinguishes from good deals and great deals all for you. Pro tip, in the past, I've actually asked for the retiring service loaner cars. These are the cars that the dealership uses when the customer brings in their car for service. They loan that car out and that's the car that I bought at a major discount. And it only had about 4,000 miles on it. So keep that in mind when you're looking, looking around for deals. Sometimes dealers will offer a 0% interest or a zero down type of financing structure and make sure you're reading the fine print because there's times where they're just asking for large financing fees as a result of this. And this goes for banks as well, but just keep that in mind as you're looking for your loan. Step five is purchasing the car that you've decided on. Now, once you've figured out what financing promotion you're comfortable with, then I'd encourage you to look at the invoice price for the car that you're entertaining. Now, I'll include a free link down in the description so that you can check it out and figure it out roundabout what the dealer pays for the car that you're looking at. Hopefully you're making these phone calls toward the end of the month, but start calling up your reputable dealers and dealer reps and ask them to get you as close as possible to that invoice price. This will help you because they'll know that you're informed and that you know what you're doing. And then in addition to that, make sure you ask them to decline all additional add-ons that are not free. So that includes things like extended warranties, uh, floor mats, and uh, service plans, paint warranties, etc. Some dealers will decline to do this for you, but I would be as polite as possible to see if they can give you the pricing up front. Ask them for the out the door bill so that you know exactly what you're paying and that there's no secrets behind everything. And in addition to this, there's a few fees that I would expect you to know that you're paying. And those are things like taxes, vehicle registration, uh, documentation fees. And these doc fees vary state and state to state and dealer to dealer. But um, the more you can negotiate on the purchase price of the actual car, the less these things will matter. Dealer and advertising fees are also tacked on. Now, I'd say it's most important to ask for these fees up front so that you know, one, what the invoice price is and additional fees so that you can make the most informed decision possible. Understand the invoice price is only for new cars. When you're working with used cars, stick to cargurus.com and different listings that you see out on the internet so that you can get a good idea of what that car would cost. As we discussed in the beginning, make sure that you're going at the end of the month, quarter, end of the year, so that you're capitalizing on all the dealer incentives that are potentially out there waiting for you to come in and to take. Keep an eye out for these things when you're looking at your financing documents. And those are things like gap coverage, which is basically whatever your car is worth and whatever the loan is amount is for, the gap coverage will come in and cover the difference between that in the event that you total your car. In addition to that, you can also see potentially balloon payments, which you must avoid at all costs. Balloon payments are large sums of money that are, are put on the back end of the loan and you're expected to pay those after you've been making all your consistent payments for a certain amount of time. Keep an eye out for high interest rates. Good interest rates are usually between 3 and 5%, but I've seen things as high as 16 plus percent. 
So be careful of that. Additional fees in your in your loans. Um, it's often there's often fees for finance charges, and that's normal. But just see if you can get that as low as possible. And then early payoff penalties. If that affects you in the event that you'd like to refinance or you decide to make multiple payments in a given month. Hopefully by this point, you've identified a few salespeople who have given you great out the door prices, have not added on anything else, and now you'll be able to schedule appointments with them. Keep in mind that when you are going to the dealership, you should expect to spend several hours there. So make sure you've eaten enough, you're wearing comfortable clothes, because yeah, you'll be there a while. While you're at the dealership, see if you can negotiate a few more free things, such as oil changes, maybe free service for a year, just different little things that they might be able to offer you to sweeten the deal. Review all the documents in great detail, and if you see anything that raises any red flags, make sure you're asking those questions. In addition to that, if they're not giving you something that you've asked for, or they promised you, or whatever you're reading isn't matching up to what you've expected, you're more than welcome to walk away even if it has taken you some time at the dealership that day. After all the financing documents have been approved, you sign the paperwork four or five hours later, congratulations, you now own a car and you've hopefully at this point gotten a good deal and have a better understanding of what goes into this entire process. If you found this video valuable in any way, please like the video and subscribe for different things that I teach on a regular basis when it comes to saving money in business and hopefully see you on the next video. Thank you so much, have a great day.